how's everyone doing? It's been a rough, it's been a very tumultuous time. So uh, I want to start off by asking, does anybody have any questions or interest in like what, what they would like to talk about in these events? I want to start there. Normally, I would go through a lot of the um, table coin movement that's been going on. I'm thinking it kind of dry. So that's kind of my plan for today. But I want to ask anyone if they've got anything else they want to talk about. Nothing? All right, well, feel free to chime in and type something out if you want to talk about it. Some questions in the public voice, Nick. Oh, they are. Thank you. <laughs> what the hell is happening with Binance? Um, yeah. Yeah, so um, if you guys have been here, for those of you that have been here before, you've probably heard me talk about this quite a lot. Um, so there's a couple of things happening. Uh, it's finally being considered by the public that Binance might be not as liquid as people would hope. Uh, so there's a, there's supposedly a, a reserve of about $65 billion. The, the numbers vary, but that's the highest number I could find. Um, and about a third of that is in BUSD. So it's pretty questionable if that BUSD is actually collateralized by anything, I think. Um, and because of the relationships that Binance has with other cryptocurrency blockchains and exchanges like you know, Justin Sun's got Tron and Poloniex and Huobi, and then you've got Palo Arduino with Tether and Bitfinex. Um, there's all of these interweaving uh, relationships between exchanges, particularly in Asia. And that's caused, I think, I think people are starting to notice uh, that they've been, you know, doing some funny books to gin up business and spend more money without having to uh, tell anyone that they're kind of spending your money. So... In the case of Binance, it's coming out that the Justice Department might be investigating Binance. They, I mean, I'm sure they have been. I'm sure they've been doing that for a long time. There have been several uh, reports on Binance in the past, and companies that are in charge of regulating them, like Chainalysis, have really softballed Binance. So I know why. I think I know why that is, but I don't necessarily agree with it. Um, and yeah, basically everybody's pulling their money out of Binance as quickly as humanly possible. So. There's, I'll talk about this over here. So if we're going to look at, do this from here. So this is what's going on with Binance, right? And if you look at net outflow of other stable coins that aren't just all of them aggregate, this is all of them aggregated together. They've received some BUSD to cushion this number and make it look less scary. Uh, it's close to $3 billion, I think. So. Yeah, people are withdrawing money off of Binance, and then uh, some entities are kind of pushing money back onto the platform to try to reinstill trust. Um, they do have reserve documentation, which I'm not going to bore you guys. I can talk about it if you guys really want to, but I, I looked at it in depth. Um, it doesn't really, you know, my opinion is not any different from anybody else's. What the reserves tell you about, it's going to take me a second to find it because that's a new function on here. Um, the reserves that Binance has publicly disclosed are kind of incomplete. So uh, I don't really, I, I want to mention this before I go any further. Coin market cap is owned by Binance. So you can get data here reliably, but once in a while, things like tether depegging don't show up here for some odd reason. Um, and I've, I've noticed uh, uh, there are a couple of bugs here and how they're getting their their API data that make me kind of wonder if eventually this will come out to be a little bit wrong. Um, so I tend to use CoinGecko instead. Get the same information if you need to look something up. I would go here first. Yeah, there's there's a kind of a I don't want to call it a bank run because it's not enough of their entire position to be considered that, but it's a lot of money's moving off Binance right now. Do you have any other questions? It's tricky because um, the on-chain analysis stuff that I typically cover, analyzing exchange data is like the hardest part of that whole equation. 
And a lot of it relies on retrospectively looking at information that comes out from either court documents or, you know, leaked data, employees testifying, you know, stuff like that. So it's hard to do in real time, but as far as the reserves that they publish go, um, I'm, I'm, I don't want to bore you guys with the details of that, but I'm happy to if people actually have an interest in doing it. But yeah, Binance is guilty of doing this for quite a while. So in terms of what's going on with the market, I don't, does anybody here have, who here still has um, significant positions in the market right now? Does anyone feel, to, feel like fussing up to that? Um, I actually withdrew all of my holdings pretty recently. I, I cashed out last year, or uh, yeah, I cashed out before uh, the end of 2021. Uh, and I've been kind of not investing and waiting to see what happens. But I would actually not trust a lot of stable coins right now. Uh, you know, there's, there's um, GBTC just having some problems. Deciding where to start today's talk because there's so much stuff going on. So I subscribed to Whale Alert on Twitter, and I noticed this. I'm sure a lot of other people did too. 2:39 um, Eastern Time in the U.S. This was, you know, about seven nine hours ago. 100 million USDC transferred from USDC Treasury to Justin Sun, and then from Justin Sun to Unknown Wallet. Three minutes after and then uh here we've got a slightly different figure uh being burned at usdc's treasury three minutes after that uh here we've got justin sun declaring just a couple minutes later <laughs> that he uh deposited 100 million usd into binance and here's his transaction hash of that uh and then same, I mean, same tweet there, and then right here, same exact time. Very strange. Uh, for some reason, Twitter felt like bundling these all together in my feed this morning, so that was nice. Uh, I don't know what to tell you about what's going on with this, but maybe that's a question we can look at. I don't think we're going to find anything, though. It's it's going to depend on the minting mechanisms. But, yeah, this... This is kind of what we're seeing, right? People are juggling money around in large amounts between different stablecoin projects, and it's really difficult to kind of parse what's going on. So I've been thinking about what that means for, for me and how I want to tackle showing you know, the things that I do here. Are they relevant? Are they interesting if we're not talking about investing? Or if we, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally recommend investing right now. But I, I do still think that the fundamentals, what I show here, are pretty relevant to what's going on, right? So I want to give you guys some, some options for maybe taking this opportunity to kind of learn for yourself how these people are getting their information, how I'm getting my information, right? I always talk about different tools that you can use to do that work. Um, but I actually omit quite a lot. There's a lot of stuff that I don't talk about here that I'm going to just share links for you guys to maybe I won't talk about the Celsius leak. I'm not going to talk about it. Um, so one very simple tip that I've mentioned in other calls, but I'll mention it again, using Google to actually do interesting stuff can get you some really interesting results. Um, I, I don't usually do this on a high level. So I'm actually starting to do this myself. And Igor Betteroff is a really excellent resource for on-chain uh, investigations and OSINT stuff in general. And he talks a little bit about how to do some of this stuff on a basic fundamental level. And he actually mentions that here. This is actually the same method that was used to analyze like the Mueller report um, when cryptocurrency analysts were looking for Russian GRU agents' wallet addresses that were published by the FBI. So it seems really high level, but it's really simple, right? Okay, so I'll mention this too. I'm gonna just dump links in the chat today.
All right. Nothing more links in the chat. Don't worry about it. So that brings me to something that I've touched on a couple of times here, USDD. There are some bottlenecks here too on what I'm able to analyze because this runs across several different blockchains. I never typically go to Tron if I can help it. Um, but this is Justin Sun's algorithmic stable coin that he is integrating into Huobi with Huobi swaps. This is happening in the last couple of months. It's based on Tron scan. And the mechanism for how this works uh, to me is a little fuzzy. I've read through the white paper, I've read through the reserve documentation, which makes these outrageous claims. Uh, and I just, does anyone here feel like they could explain USDD? Because I'm kind of looking for somebody to do that for me. Like in principle, what's going on is that they're using these reserve assets as uh, collateral and backing the stable coin of that collateral. But um, what I see going on between Binance and Justin Sun's Tronscan and sometimes going to Huobi or Poloniex is that when Binance is something like really risky or shady to do, they kind of use Justin Sun's network to help them do it. Um, one of the examples of this came out in Reuters, which I'm sorry for the people that have been here before have already seen this. I've already talked about it. But what this report found is that uh, Binance was trading a lot of cryptocurrency for sanctioned countries. So like, you know, RAN based exchanges. And most of this traffic is running through Tron. And I think the reason for that is that it's harder to analyze it and find what's going on. And perhaps I might be totally speculating to say anything about it, but the person that designed and, and owns Tron is maybe not the best person to trust with, you know, ledger data. So I do have a big interest in taking this further. I think what I'm going to do is look at uh, getting slow mist so that I can analyze what's going on with the stablecoin uh, traffic here. There's not, it's really weird. Like there's not a lot of wallets moving through uh, using these, these cryptocurrency assets, but they're using them on specific days in high volume. And they're doing a lot of transactions when they do it. So it, it does, I mean, on its face, it looks like clusters of activity happening at specific times. But it's difficult to understand what's going on without kind of charting the whole thing out to see it. This is still like a, an interesting black box for me. And in terms of what's been going on in crypto, I mean, you all know that Sam Bankman fried is in uh, custody. Blah, 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 lots of new stuff going on that isn't necessarily relevant to what we're going to talk about here. I mean, it kind of is. And yes, we now know that the block was getting paid, or at least their, their co-founders was getting paid by uh, Sam Bankman fried for some unknown reason. I just, I see this over overarching theme, right, where Regionally, uh, we're seeing East Asian cryptocurrency companies kind of fighting it out with U.S. regulators. And then we had this, um, th their main competitor was pretty much, I mean, there's a couple of them, but FTX is one of their biggest competitors, and uh, that's no longer the case. So there's a, dom there's a market dominance there, in effect, and it's going to be really difficult to you know, walk that back. I don't know what comes next. Um, yeah, I, th I think what I'm going to touch on for today's investigation side of stuff is that, so this this came out a while ago, and I, I didn't notice because I didn't really investigate Celsius when the, when the leak happened. But I keep seeing this name pop up, Falcon X, um, anytime I'm looking at stablecoin traffic that's recent. So especially stablecoin traffic that's related to entities that are in the middle of failing 
and they're trying to um, bail on their uh, customers. So this happened where a Falcon X wallet was mistakenly labeled as Alameda Research, and Decrypt had actually issued a retraction. But the reason I think it was mislabeled is totally reasonable. Um, there's all this money that was flowing from accounts that appear to be as associated with FTX or Alameda Research going on to Falcon X. They're completely denying that and saying that this mistake is very unreasonable and how could they publish this? Um, but I, I mean, I, I do still think there's something going on there that's maybe not been published yet. I want to look. I want to look under smart money first. I mean, the, the other thing I know that I could talk about in terms of like what's going on with the exchanges and liquidity, uh, and like what's what's going to happen if Binance um, has some problems there. It seems like they do right now. They're freezing people's ability to trade certain cryptocurrency assets. I think that the last thing I could mention there. Um, I tweeted this. I never published it anywhere, but the very first thing I tweeted is, is basically the reason I, I made a Twitter account in the first place on here, to being off of it. But I wanted people to see this if I was right. It's kind of testing a method that I used. Uh, so I tweeted Kevin O'Leary's cryptocurrency wallet uh, almost exactly a year ago now. And then right after I did that, he went on a uh, halftime report and talked about how he had just moved all of this money into Coinbase Lend and that he was in Dubai when he was doing that. So what I tweeted, what I found is that it, he moved 80 million USDT from two Coinbase accounts between December 3rd and December 8th and also set up a multi-sig wallet, which now has over $200 million in it. And the reason I found this is that I was using a method that I've shown here many times. I can't do it right now uh, because I don't have a Nonsense Alpha account, but I took Gnosis Safe wallets that have been set up recently and I was scanning through them when the market crashed uh, in December. And I wanted to see who was trying to offload their assets either from exchanges into USDT or other stable coins or setting up Gnosis Safe wallets to essentially do the same thing, hide the money, but move it away from the market, right? And um, what I found was that this was his wallet address, you know, Larry Shark Duddies. And I also found that his protege, who runs Valeri Ventures, his name's Alex Kenjeb. And this is his wallet, Kenjeb Duddies. Um, and as an aside, Mark Cuban, who you may know from the show that he was on with Kevin O'Leary, Mark the Shark Daddies. This this one I didn't find. Uh, this one Protos published a few months ago. But these two did in fact have money on FTX, um, and it was moved off of there. But what was really interesting and what's still interesting to me is I don't really understand what's going on with the multi-sig account that I found. It's here. So this ties into what's going on right now with these exchanges because, I mean, Kevin O'Leary is testifying before Congress uh, about FTX. As far as I know, he's still going to testify. Uh, but he has claimed to have a certain amount of cryptocurrency assets. Um, if I'm right and he owns that wallet, then I think the amount that he owns exceeds what he's publicly disclosed by quite a lot. And that's pretty interesting because until a few, I forget how long now, yeah, it's been a while. I've, I've, I did this work a year ago and I looked at this as an update a few weeks ago. So I'm kind of looking at this with fresh eyes. Um, but they actually, whatever's going on here where Polygon Foundation is moving money with whoever controls this multi wallet, I think it's Kevin O'Leary and some other people, uh, but 
they actually swapped a lot of these assets for Binance stablecoin BUSD quite recently. And you can see that here. So between middle of September and now. And right now this wallet's sitting on um, it's 100 plus, $137 million in BSD. So I do know that this wallet is receiving funds, or I'm sorry, it's dispersing $2 million to Polygon Foundation, if I remember correctly. This looks like a bulk payment, but in general, it's sending fixed amounts of, I think, $2 million every month. And also, they, the money that's here, like it looks to me like what Kevin O'Leary was doing was using Coinbase and FTX US to do stuff on US-based financial activity. And then when he needed to do it offshore in you know, Dubai is where Binance is currently based, um, then he would go to Binance or FTX. And I saw a little bit of this when I looked at Kenjev for activity just before the market totally collapsed uh, with FTX news. And that's so September is moving money. Where did I find it? It must be here. Excuse me while I fumble around here. So we see money coming in from FTX exchange to Kenjev and then out from Kenjev to Polygon multisig. Let's put this in a non sign. It's an interesting question to me because I think that if O'Leary had assets on FTX, um, I mean, I, I, I really don't know. I shouldn't speculate, but. I just saw some really interesting stuff here. I'm going to cheat and go back. Here we go. So Ken Jeff was moving money into this wallet one degree away from him and then moving it on to FTX exchange, FTX US, and then out to FTX exchange. That's the weird part, right? So November 4th, he's moving money from FTX US to FTX exchange just before the bankruptcy news is dropping right after the, uh, the balance sheet was leaked. So I actually don't know if he has exposure here. I'm hoping that when the leaked, I'm, I'm hoping that if the court case comes out, I'll be able to try to verify that part. I should see his name or the company name, something to try to tell me more about what's going on here. And normally I, I wouldn't share something this, like to me, this is pretty fresh and um, I could just keep this to myself, but I tweeted it a year ago for a reason. I wanted to see if I was right and nobody cared, um, which is pretty, I think, typical unless you have like a huge following. What, I, there's too much going on in crypto, but, if I'm right, then it's going to eventually come out anyway. I just want to seem smart. So that's that's what's interesting to me here. Same thing with Kevin O'Leary's activity. So this is there if you want to look at it. There's not a lot going on until you get to this multi-sig account, which I'm very sure is tied to these two other wallets because they the transactions were uh, almost at the exact same time. Timestamps are right there in order. So there's that. And I do want to dig into this more at some point. Um, I don't think it's ethical to look at Celsius data in public because it's been widely watched from the internet, but it's still out there. And I was shocked to see that the court documents actually still have all that customer data. It's just sitting there. 
they just buried it page 34 so it's there um the question though of what's going on with rap bitcoin and falcon x and how falcon x is tied into what's going on with some of these crashes i think that's a really interesting question and how defensive they got about that decrypt article uh maybe i can pull that up I'm going to get the wrong Falcon X. I'll leave it alone. But I mean, they really reamed decrypt for this. Um, they were not happy. I can see why, too. If they have some weird stuff going on there, I wouldn't want to be in the press about it either. Where do I want to go next? So I've covered some of this. Checking off stuff off my list here. Let's talk about winter mute. And I'm I'm just gonna go through and look at what's going on with stable coin flows in general. But I did want to highlight winter mute and I do want to look at, at Falcon X as well. If I can find their wallets. Falcon X is Falcon X is kind of similar to Alameda Research and how their their wallet structure is set up. They have just a million wallets. They seem to be using the same method that Alameda Research was using to do a lot of their transaction stuff, and it's really difficult to analyze what's going on um, in total. I've been, I've been I've, I remember looking at Falcon X before. It's usually a partial analysis if I'm looking at them. I've never really thought to take that question further but yeah i want to look at wrap btc for winter mute and also just wrap btc because of these burns that have been going on wow i didn't notice that this morning so Look at the supply change. Okay. This is what I noticed this morning. Should be updated by now. Not sure why it's not. It's only showing up until end of October. We can see them here though. 10,000 rat BTC seven days ago. And then we know that some of this became uh, was cashed out. Yeah, that's huge. So I didn't see any other entities that were doing huge amounts of burning with rat BTC recently. Just winter mute and Amber did some not that recently. Checking the chat here. Any questions so far? Any comments? I want to get what's going on recently. I always go to either scan to see in particular what's going on with stable coins. They're transferring these out. They're not keeping them on the wallet. So we can neglect that and move on to the next wallet, which is this one here. So 
feel like an exchange wallet, but it could be a market maker. I'm sure that somebody's already labeled these. I'm just walking through the process of how to find it. And from here. Closer. The same thing here. All right, so we're going to look at USDC. See it's coming in, going out. Three E four three. That's kind of unexpected. Okay, so Weird. So they're pulling it. Okay. They're depositing it on Binance. Assuming from there they'd have to cash it out, unless they're propping it up. Checking how I want to look at this. Let's just. I'm gonna I am gonna talk about the exchange reserves really briefly. Yeah, so here it is. So drawing it from Coinbase, pausing it on Binance. So I want to see if the change in USDC on Binance. I guess I can't. That's probably Something I'm not going to be able to look at. Yeah, that's that's the end of what I can see there. Um, that's just so odd. Well, this might be helpful. We can look at Falcon X while we're sitting here. Okay. So. I just wanted to see, like, in general, what other relationships, like, what's going on with Falcon X's uh, reserves in their portfolio, if I can even, there's, there's going to be some really hard limits for what I can look at here. Let's think about how to do this. So what I've seen in the past is, I'm speaking from memory and look at this quite a bit this year. I've seen a lot of money uh, flowing in from Falcon X customers. We're talking strictly, but I think Alameda Research moving money onto their platform and then moving it off as a way to kind of either wash the funds or whatever. For whatever reason, they, they took some of their funds and threw them through Falcon X. I mean, I've said this before, but Alameda's funding. They had so much capital that it was kind of like finding styrofoam in the ocean. It's all over the transaction data. It's really hard to not just come across random stuff that they were doing. So that's not odd. But stuff like, you know, some of the counterparties, when you look at the comparisons, there's just, there's so much going on there. I would love it if this data would leak later on. Taking too long to load. I 
don't know. Interesting kind of academic question at this point, but I do think Falcon X had a relationship there that they're not disclosing. So we see the same thing. They're depositing it onto Binance while Binance is in the middle of this, this problem. These might just be customers doing that through Falcon X. That might be nothing. The amounts are pretty small. Wintermute, what they are doing, though, is massive. Maybe that's not that interesting to look at. I think that's a really complicated question, but the data's there. Now we're going to move on. Um, so I want to talk really briefly about what Binance has in reserve according to Binance and according to uh, the audit company that professes to uh, trust, trust their word. So they're taking this list of addresses, which you can actually find on the audit report. The first thing I noticed is, um, yeah, a significant amount of this is on Tron. And like I mentioned, roughly, uh, roughly a third of the asset allocation is in uh, BUSD. And that's here. So the BTC reserves, those are probably legit. I mean, I've seen those. It doesn't mean they're not collateral. It doesn't mean they're not using them for other things. But my biggest concern here is that if these stable coins are not redeemable, then that's like 50% of their reserve, right? So these are coming from Tether and Bitfinex. And we have BUSD, which is coming from Binance and Paxos and Silvergate. So make of that what you will. Um, I do know that there's some of this is moving over to Tron. I think to to help, like that seems to be part of the the relationship there. It's that Binance is helping Tron sending stable coins over there. Tron's doing whatever funny stuff they're doing to help Binance uh, diversify their extremely complicated portfolio of activity. I'm not sure, I don't have a good elegant way to phrase that, but it, it's complicating stuff further and make it harder to analyze what's where and who owns what. So if you could think of Huobi and Poloniex and Tron as like a mixing service, that might be a, an apt way to describe it. That's just my opinion though. I don't know that for a fact. I'm definitely in speculation speculation land today. In terms of what's going on with, normally I would talk about like what's going on with the market in general, but I think the market's kind of come to not a complete halt, but things have definitely stagnated with all the concern uh, around all of these exchanges because it that comprises most of the market, right? I mean, this really in its essence is a really speculative base and it's it's always been hugely inflated i mean that's i hope that's not new information but unfortunately a lot of the time that seems to be the case that people didn't really know that um whoa it's new too okay so this is tether great yep two hours old that's interesting some of this you'll see come out on Twitter uh, as feeds. You know, you'll see some of this get disclosed. But sometimes when you look through the activity, um, the things that coincide in timing look really systematic, um, especially when it comes to things like Tether Treasury and exchanges moving money around. A good example might be when uh, there's a lot of money, I think, flowing to or from, I forget, uh, gate.io, when they were in the middle of trying to prove their reserves. Wow.
This is all okay. $3 billion. Wow. Okay. Maybe I'll share this. Maybe. Maybe I'll just share one. That's pretty crazy. Here, I'll share the I'll share the transaction hash to make this simple. In the last day, Tether Treasury has sent $3 billion in Tether to Binance. E9BB. I wonder if this is one of their reserve wallets. Is this wallet empty? Is this an intermediary? I want to see if this is where the, where the endpoint is for these funds. I want to see if they trickle back down to, I probably won't be able to go very far with this. It's just going to say Binance. Yeah, this is going to be a dead end for me. First received tether a month ago. I remember this, yeah. They went on to Binance. Wow. That kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? Um, do you have any questions or comments so far? I'm kind of shocked, honestly. Uh, I did not. Catch that this morning. I don't really need to say anything. Um, yeah, we'll move on from that. What else do we have here? So I've said this before, it's tricky to analyze some of these other exchanges like Gemini and Crypto.com. That's just going to bear out over time. Um, my ability to do much here is pretty pretty limited, but that's why I wanted to get back to this this part about really really sticking to the fundamentals of what you're what you know what you can prove. You know, if you want a data model, what's going on with with a market maker with a cryptocurrency asset to understand it? That's one thing. But if you think that because reputation and credibility, which are contrived regularly in crypto, is is a good way to like invest your money, um, the takeaway is that it doesn't really. This this whole place is built on top of contriving credibility from nothing, and a lot of the time that's in bad faith, right? I'm gonna check the USD holdings. I want to see if they're um, funneling tether in. And then immediately doing something with the BUSD supply. So I suspect that that's what's going on. Like BUSD is a riskier asset because it might be imaginary. Um, so yeah, we've got an offloading here. Some of this might be a transfer. I have to double check that, but let's look at changes. I don't trust the net flow metrics on here because um, one way to keep the statistics clean, if you don't want your exchange to look like you're having liquidity issues, is just print more money um, to balance out the the net the net flow of stable coins. I would miss some stuff if I didn't go to each individual stablecoin token contract and look at it to understand what's going on there. So in terms of exchange 
seven days down $2 billion in BOC that doesn't make any sense. Unless some of this money is. Okay, so the burn address. Got almost 20 million from, okay, 50 million from Falcon X. It's highly suspicious. I'm going to save that. And I don't really care about 20. Some of these are new metrics for me to be glancing at here. So I'm, I really miss my Nuts and Alpha account, but I just can't justify paying for it myself. Ah, you know what? I did notice something in here earlier. Um, maybe it's down here. Yeah. So I, I talk about this a lot. When you want to find clusters of activity that someone's splitting up to make it harder to, to find, one way to do that is, well, let's, let's not jump ahead. One way to do that is you'll see, like we're looking at the seven day, I don't want the seven day, but I'll use this as an example. The clusters are set up around the same exact time. So all under 10 million to skirt some international laws, which is typical for big, big market makers. Alameda did the same. And sometimes you'll see figures that are split between several wallets. That's pretty typical when you want to try to hide what you're, what you're laundering, if you want to call it laundering. And when I want to look at this, uh, I don't think, I think this is paywalled for me. Yeah. Yeah, I can't look at that. So I'm going to sort by time for the first contract interaction with those assets. That's one way to do it. Another um, is to look at change and then look for similar time frames. Like here, we've got these are the same day. I saw a lot of 32 to 35 days ago. That's what I'm kind of trying to highlight here if I get lucky. So some of these are three hours old, and they're probably part of the same cluster. Some are 35 days old, which would tell me that it was closer to when the market started to tank. A lot of these are from the last day. That's worth graphing later. I'll probably um I'll pl I'll plug these into breadcrumbs and see if they chart out together. It looks like the funds are still there, so I'll have to wait for them to move. Yeah, one way to, like, this is typical of how rug pulls function. Um, a lot of these cryptocurrency assets that are really high, high risk, they're put onto wallets in, in clusters because they're, it's like a batch. It's, it's, a, it's a botted, automated batch activity, right? Over time, they want it to look like it's growing naturally. So they'll make up these random numbers. And then over a period of time, they'll put those cryptocurrency assets into new wallets, which have no other history in them. Or they have really sketchy histories. Like this is not, you know, coming from Binance. Oh, that's not a shock. Uh, so, and yeah, there's no history here. So it's just a coming from Binance. It's just data, right? It's just this inflates the amount of BUSD that's on a diversified wallet that Binance can offload off of their book if they control those wallets, right? So we don't really know who controls this wallet, but Binance can deny owning that that asset. So when you see a, a lot of those being set up, like I'm seeing here, that makes me kind of nervous. Um, and that's why I'm so interested in this asset, because this is going to be the big hole in their reserve if it comes out that they don't have enough to cover their customers. That's where it's going to come from. That and some of their synthetic assets, like you know, RAP BTC, GBTC, HBTC, all the, all the stuff that's, you know, there, there's a step in there where somebody can game the system. So, but yeah, that's there's so much activity here that looks relatively new that it makes me kind of nervous. Um, I, what I would do actually is short some of these. I was going to do any trading, I would short one of these companies that's got exposure to BUSD because that might imply something about their relationship with, um, with some of these exchanges. So jump trading. Wow. 
Wow. Okay. I'm going to move on. It's just depressing, but uh, I know that's what the data shows, right? So, do you have any questions or comments? Anyone new and really confused? What's going on here? And and see a lot of names that I don't really recognize. So I want to mention that if anyone here is new and it's your first time coming, I've been doing these for a while. So what I'm waiting for is sooner or later, the the data that came out with Celsius is going to be comparable to the data that's coming out with FTX. And when that finally happens, people are going to be combing through it, looking for ways to you know take take the take the data and look for overlaps between certain entities. Like you know, Marin Altman, everybody knows, took money from Celsius. There's her name is on the the balance sheet. It's a really short list of stuff that's on the non-customers. It's just the corporate balance sheet. Her name's on there twice. Uh, so she got 30 grand from Celsius and, you know, advertised the product. And she denies that that's what happened. But if the FTX news breaks, uh, it's going to show the same thing for her. And I haven't been able to find evidence of that on chain. I just know that's the case. So I'm when that data comes out, I'm going to be looking for names of people, you know, not Marin Altman in particular, but people that have uh, like a shady background, you know, like Falcon X. I want to know what, what's going on with Falcon X's books. There's a bottleneck there. I'm just going to wait to see if something comes out as a leak, and then I can compare it. Um, one thing I'll mention too is that I'll talk about some of these these guys on Twitter that have been doing really really good reporting. Because a lot of what I'm getting is coming from some of these, I guess, amateur analysts who are now being cited in court cases. How do you consolidate on-chain knowledge into actionable steps, whether it's for trading or just market, general market movements? Well, if we're talking about, so when I integrate price data into what we're talking about, things get a little less confusing, right? So if we're talking about any cryptocurrency asset, I can look for a price spike. I can see who front ran. I can see basically why this price spike happened, why there was a dip, who stopped it from going further. It gives me a lot of insight into what the factors, the invisible factors that are causing these price movements. Most of the time, it's a couple of key wallets or clusters of wallets controlled by uh, certain key individuals or companies that are making this activity happen. And you can determine that by looking at how much of the volume they are responsible for. So it's not really, you can do this as like a modeling, a data modeling thing and do kind of some, some quick math. But in terms of actionable intelligence, you can look for wallets that are doing things with a good track record of getting information and doing decent investment strategies. Um, but I personally like looking for when the market crashes, who moves the money out? because that tells me people are a lot more honest with, with their money and where they move it than with anything else. And when they're afraid of losing it, they're, they're accidentally very, very honest about their, their true feelings and their true intentions. And um, that's where I get the best insight from. So if Wintermute Trading thinks like the market's going to collapse tomorrow morning, they're not going to leave their money on Binance, right? If that's still their money. Um, there's a certain amount of people want to hold that risk until the last possible second and then unload it before anybody else can. And that's, that's really what I look for is short term activity like that, that's going on, or I'll look for structural stuff in the market that, that has been set up in kind of a semi sophisticated way to look really legit. And then you can go and analyze the on-chain data to figure out that it isn't. And I've done a lot of that too. Any other questions? Like being set up, which is fragile in reality. Um, yeah. So 
Wrap BTC, I think, is a good example. And I've covered this on one of these calls before. Uh, forgive me, I don't remember which one, but I've, I've been curious about Wrap BTC for a while, right? Because the minting mechanism, like Alameda Research was minting Wrap BTC and dispersing it uh, throughout the, the industry. And a lot of it was going into DeFi protocols and a lot of it was going into Maker for DAI, which was stacked in with other DeFi protocols, but some of it was just going to other market makers. And from there, I don't really know what they were doing with it, but there's exposure to this asset that um, I don't think has come out yet in the press. And I think like there are reserves for rat Bitcoin. I've looked at them. Um, they're, it looks to me like they were set up by a couple of owners. I don't know who. And because I, I didn't take the question further, but the rat Bitcoin reserve list, there's not a lot of wallet addresses there. Uh, they were set up by a few owners, I think, in like eight or ten thousand dollar chunks. So, or excuse me, eight or ten thousand Bitcoin chunks. So, I don't know who controls those assets, but that's what these are in theory being minted against. And I could see a lot of problems there. So, there's a lot of assets like that. And some of these stable coins go to CoinGecko categories. My favorite part of CoinGecko, go to stable coins. This is where you'll see a lot of those fragile assets, right? USDD is now a stable stablecoin controlled by like a known con man. Um, you know, we know the companies to look at to understand who controls these. And in the documentation for those companies like Binance, US, BSD, we know who Binance's uh, creditors and debtors are. We know what their paperwork says. We know what their audit says, even though it's a trash audit. You can compile that together to analyze that this is probably an extremely fragile asset. And it's also extremely suspicious uh, for the timing. And the bigger question, I think, is Tether, which everybody's known forever is kind of, you know, coming from a place of being useful, but how it's being propped up, nobody really cares until it fails. Right? Any others? So I want to leave you with something that I compiled earlier. Let's scroll through and grab it. Now there's so much you can do, uh, not just in crypto, but in general, right? About doing work online to make money. And I think that extends beyond the scope of what I talk about here. But it it kind of gets to the larger point of learning how to do skills that allow you to find information that people have a hard time finding gives you a leg up on your competition, which is everybody else looking for the same information. So I like to think of this stuff in terms of how good am I at finding information versus other people? And am I, am I doing a good job at trying to understand it? Because if I am, I'm going to find a way to monetize that skill. And you don't have to, well, that's the wrong link. You don't have to be uh, working as a coder. You don't have to be doing anything in particular. There are a lot of ways to kind of do what you want with this information. But I think I think the point is to get the skills and rely on your own information rather than somebody else's, as long as you're able to do that correctly. So that's that's what I believe. That's what I'm here to do. Um, do you have any more questions or comments? We're going to leave it there. Thanks for coming.